name is Dr. Tim Neal. I'm the infection control doctor at the Royal Liverpool University Hospital. I have wide ranging responsibilities for all aspects of infection control and the sites that I cover. And this includes alert organisms such as MRSA, VRE and CPE, as well as dealing with such things as water safety and air safety in the organisations as well. In our organisation, we've been on quite a steep learning curve with CPE. Initially, we thought, and I think others think this also, that it isn't a big problem in their organisation. However, once we started to look for this organism, we found it and then we found more. And this is despite taking very stringent infection control measures and applying the, the national guidance as it is written. I think CPE is a very significant threat at the moment. It's listed on the uh, National Risk Register because I think we recognise that with the emergence of this organism and the potential of untreatable infections in the future, it's going to transform the way we practice healthcare and the way patients are managed and the safety of those patients. As these become more common, we will see more and more infections with these organisms, making antibiotic treatment futile and patients will suffer as a consequence of this. When we first started to screen for CPE, we encountered significant challenges in this healthcare organisation, particularly in identifying sufficient isolation facilities for patients and occasionally this couldn't be done practically and we would cohort patients together. Sometimes we've had to close wards because of the number of patients we've had where we've had to implement strict measures to stop spread. Laboratory procedures at the time, because it was a new test, it was a phenotypic test, so we were culturing the organism, the turnaround time for those samples was significant, sometimes as long as five days, by which time a patient would have been in the hospital for that period of time and the potential for spread was significant. And that was our greatest challenge. We introduced molecular testing initially for contacts of patients in a ward environment and this allowed us to speed up the time or, or shorten the time that the ward would remain closed before we could readmit to that ward area. If we get to a point where we can identify patients on admission as being a carrier of this multi-resistant organism, we could prevent any of them being admitted to ward areas where they would have contact with other patients i.e. they could be admitted straight to an isolation facility or to an isolation room and that way both they would be protected and other patients would be protected also. Rapid molecular diagnostics, as the name suggests, provide us with a much more rapid result so that we can turn around a, a sample in a matter of hours and identify patients quickly and take the necessary precautions quickly. The time it takes to culture the organism using conventional methods it's too long for practical infection control measures to be implemented successfully and that the more rapid you can make a diagnosis or the more rapidly you could identify a patient as a potential carrier the quicker you can take precautions and prevent spread and that has been a significant finding for us.